Bristol Community College, Mathematics with Dan Avendikian, Math 119, Fundamental Statistics, Section 10.2, Problem 3. This is Section 10.2, Problem Number 3. It says, the average time to assemble a Ford F-Series pickup is mu equal to 38 hours with a standard deviation of sigma equal to 1.19 hours. A plant manager has introduced a modification to the assembly process that is supposed to reduce the time needed to complete each truck. A random sample of 49 trucks had an average assembly time of X bar equal to 37.6 hours. Is there enough evidence to support the claim that the assembly time has been reduced, testing at a .01 level of significance? So this is a hypothesis test. The population standard deviation is known. This is a six-step process. Step one, state the null hypothesis. The symbol is a capital H with a subscript of zero. We're going to have mu. And we have some condition of equality. Could be equals, could be greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So here we have mu equals 38. So there's my condition of equality. And I'm going to have that as my null hypothesis. That's step one. Null hypothesis, mu equals 38. Step two, state the alternate hypothesis. So capital H subscript of 1, or some books use an A, lowercase a. Uh, you're going to have the same mu, you're going to have the same number. So it stays 38. But you will either have a greater than symbol, less than symbol, or a not equal to symbol. Now in this case, what are we trying to test? We want to test to see if that average has become smaller than 38, if they can assemble the trucks faster in less time than 38 hours. So you want to see if the average has decreased or become smaller. So I'm going to use less than. No or equal to. The equal to only exists in the null hypothesis. So that's step two. Alternate hypothesis mu is less than 38. Step three, determine if this is a left tail, right tail, or two tail test. So to determine what type of test it is, what you want to do is look at the inequality symbol in the alternate hypothesis and see what direction it points in. My alternate hypothesis has a less than symbol which points to the left. So this would be a left tail test. That's step three. Step four, calculate the value of z. So the formula for z for a hypothesis test is z equals x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. Now as I fill that in, z equals x bar. It's given to us in the problem that x bar is 37.6. minus mu. So mu is given as 38. Then in the denominator, sigma, which is 1.19 over square root of n. n is the size of the sample. So our sample is a sample of 49. So n is 49. That's how many items are in the sample. And that fills in the formula for z. Now, to actually do the computation, z equals, so in the numerator, 37.6 minus 38 is negative 0.4. Have to pay attention to the sign. Then in the denominator, I'm going to have 1.19 over, square root of 49 is 7, because 7 times 7 is 49. Now, at this point, you're probably going to want to break out your calculator. To simplify that denominator, I'm going to have z equals negative 0.4. Now, 1.19 divided by 7 is not something that most people do easily without their calculator. So just 1.19 divided by 7 equals. And the calculator will tell you that it is 0.17. And now to finish off the calculation for z, z equals negative 0.4 divided by 0.17 equals. So <clears throat> the calculator will tell you 
Z is negative 2.3529411. So that's step four. Calculate the value for Z. We calculate the value for Z and we've got negative 2.3529411. So step five is look up the value for z in the standard normal chart, or the z chart. So in order to look up something in the chart, the first part of the process is write the number to look up so that it has two places after the decimal. Well, now we have way more than two. So go out to the third place after the decimal. It's a two. Two is not big enough to make it a negative 2.36. So basically everything after the five just can drop, get dropped off. To write the number to look up so that it has two places after the decimal is negative 2.35. Don't lose the negative. And when we look it up, remember there's a negative page of the chart and a positive page of the chart. Make sure you're on the correct page. So now the next thing I want to do now that I have two places after the decimal is split the number into two parts by pulling off the rightmost digit, which now would be the five. So the number to look up can be written into two parts. One is negative 2.3 and the other just five. Now what I want to do is put a point zero in front of the rightmost digit that I pulled off. So I have negative 2.3 and the five gets written as a point zero five. Now I can go to the chart, go to the negative 2.3 row of the chart on the negative page, the point zero five column, and see where the row and the column intersect. They will intersect at point zero zero nine four. Now, that's step five. Look up the value for z in the standard normal chart. We looked it up and we got a chart value of 0 0.0094. So step six, the last step, is state your conclusion. So the conclusion should either say reject the null hypothesis where you think that it's most likely that these trucks can be assembled faster now than they could be before the average amount of assembly time has actually decreased, or fail to reject the null hypothesis, which means it's most likely the average assembly time is still 38 hours. So which one would it be? Well, we have a left tail test. So in the left side of our bell curve, we're looking for the leftmost 0 0.01, and we want to see if we're in that region. And the other would be 0 0.99. Again, the whole uh, bell curve is 100% or, or 1. So now what we have is 0 0.0094, so it just barely makes it into that critical zone. So because I got into the critical region, my conclusion will be reject the null hypothesis. It does seem most likely that the trucks are being assembled faster now. Again, you can never be 100% positive, it's just you saying it's most likely. So my final step, step six will be reject null hypothesis.